and welcome to another edition of the Big Nick Energy Podcast. First off, check out our sponsor, Empire Original Designs, at jointheempire.com, the East Coast's number one challenge coin manufacturer, the home of challenge coins, lapels, pins, patches, keychains, bottle openers, and more. Mention our podcast, Big Nick Energy, via email for 5% off purchases. Once again, that's jointheempire.com. Through Empire Original Designs, we have a few vintage collectible Patrick Ewing coins left, professionally designed by us and manufactured and handmade by Empire. There were only 50 coins made being sold for $20 each plus shipping. Buy them at BigNickEnergy.com. I'm your host once again, Joe Yoke, the bald kid wonder. And we got the mega mind mastermind, Angela, who makes the website all happen. And that first game was so sad, man. I don't know how else to open up. It was Joe, sad. Remember, remember what I told you. I think I told you, or I told Vinny, or I told a hundred other people. This Knicks team, they're young. They haven't played in front of the world's most famous arena with 15,000 people in their first playoff game in eight years. If I was one of them going into that game, I would be shitting my pants. So I totally understood, well, I'm definitely not understanding the loss, but I understood them coming out stagnant. They did get off to a slow start. And oddly enough, even though Alfred Payton did have one terrible defensive lapse, I wouldn't actually blame him at the beginning of the game like I would most of the other games he's involved in. Their whole team looked shook. Like the Hawks were like, they're not, they're not cheering for us. They're not affecting us. We don't have to, good, to be good for the fans or anything. Like, R.J. Barrett looked a little shook. Julius definitely pressed for not even the first quarter, for most of the game, unfortunately. And, like, we did – our defense kept us in this game. Our bench unit specifically really kept us in. 107-105 Atlanta, like, at the end, obviously, it could have gone either way. But in the first half, it looked like Atlanta was going to wash us their starters against our starters. Yeah, I mean – like I said, I think they came out stagnant. I think um, Atlanta came out very – I think neither team has nothing to lose. You know, uh, I mean, there was expectations with Atlanta at the beginning of the year. They have they have a good team, man. Don't underestimate this team. I mean, I'm pretty sure they had the best record. Uh, the last 24 games, they were 17-7. and seven. I mean, the Knicks, on the other hand, they really – We had the lose. same record. We had the same record. Um, you know, we have nothing to lose um, from our point of view. You know, but they really feel like they could do this. So, um, you know, they came out stagnant. Um, I don't know if you've seen. I'm sure you've seen because you're on the internet just like everybody else. But Thibodeau might think about, or he wasn't, he was just non-committable about, um, you know, this Alfred Payton being in the starter lineup. I, I mean, think we have actually seen the last of Alfred Payton. And if if he is actually in for the game too, I would be shocked. Dude, our, our nine, it, it's the playoffs. You only need nine men. We have... Switch out Burks for Peyton. Then you have Rose, Quickly, Gibson, Toppin. And those are the four off the bench. And play that nine. And just take Peyton out altogether. Also, I don't want to see Frank Nilakina play one play. If you are going to play him, at least play him five to ten minutes. Don't let him be ice cold. Don't let him play one play. That's a waste of time. Yeah, poor coaching. Uh, I mean... Like I told you guys before, he did this in the regular season a lot towards the second half of the season where he'd put Frank in out of possession at the end of the second half or he put him in at the end of the fourth quarter. But this is the biggest stage right now. Like there's no bigger stage than this right now. We needed to win that game. Um, He tried. He brought Frank in. And to be honest with you, Frank had him. Like I thought Frank covered him well. Up until obviously he came to his back to his right hand, but he had him going left. He forced him to his offhand, and then Trey Young just fixed him up. Joe, I mean, I don't know. Taz Gibson kind of showed himself, but after that, that was kind of that was kind of the end of it. And he went well, right. Well, what happened was that Collins was actually supposed to set a screen, and uh, mm-hmm. Collins actually lost his shoe when he was coming out, and Trey waved him off. I, yes. didn't, I don't know if you actually knew that. Yeah, so Trey waved him off. So then it was just one v one. And Trey took a couple dribbles left and then crossed over right and then got to his floater game, which Joe, Joe, Trey Young was not giving up that ball. No. Also, he said after the game, Lou Williams told him not to give up the yes. ball. Yes. Yes. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. You're the best but, player. Um, you're the best player on your team. 
best player on the team, uh, and he definitely was the best player on the court that night. I mean, our best player had his – I mean, I would say it was probably his worst game of the year. That I would think Randall Randall had the one Bucks game. I think I mentioned this the last pod. It was the first game after the All Star break that Randall was terrible. Uh, I think this is his second worst game of the year, though. It was really bad. He had 15 points on 23 shots. He only went two of six from three. Uh, he had did they got 13 boards, but he also had like three or four turnovers. Uh, a couple of them more costly than other ones, obviously. The only reason there there's two people that made us stay in this game. And it was Alec Burks and Derek Rose. It wasn't Julius Randle or RJ Barrett. Yeah. I mean, I, I liked how both of those guys played. I'd even liked the top in minutes, Joe. I mean, and let's quickly, talk both about rookies. those 12, you know, our, our, our rookies play great. We gave top in 12 minutes, which I, I didn't think he was going to get 12 minutes. I was going to say anywhere from like six to 10. I mean, he contributed very well. And to be honest with you, Joe, I liked the looks we got. I like the looks we got even in the first quarter when we scored 16 points. Yeah. Like I said before, they just were not ready for that moment. You know, that moment, that first quarter, the start of that game, you know, it was just, uh, it was just, uh, it was too much for them maybe, but it I was think crazy. The crowd this, got them too hyped. Joe, that crowd, man. I mean, I mean, there was nothing like seeing that crowd. Like after that quickly three to bring us down, I don't know what, what, what we would uh we cut the lead to but after one of quickly threes in the first half or the beginning of the third quarter man that garden was lit the fuck up you seen spike lee on the sideline yeah. jumping up and down like a lunatic also spike uh, lee can't jump nearly as high as he used to man it's been a while since uh, i saw spike get excited he didn't get anywhere off the ground he could still <laughs> jump higher than me right at this moment i mean not broken for, back and all not for longer joe not for longer <laughs> uh and i was actually so I want to talk about a couple of plays specifically. Uh, obviously, just anyone that didn't watch the game that listens to this, the Knicks lost 107-105. Uh, Trey Young made a game-winning throw. Yo, hold on. Before you get up. to that, what did you think of Gallinari's hair? That was – it took me a while. Like, I know the Hawks roster, and I still was like, for two minutes, like, who is that? Yo, Mohawk? I thought that was Marcin Gortat. Yo, literally. I was like, yo, did they sign Gortat for this and just not tell anyone? <laughs> Yo, my first thought with Gallinari's hair, I, I just talk retarded a lot of the time, so you're going to have to bear with me here. I was like, there's no way Gallinari is is going out to Tao downtown, which is the hottest club and best place in, in the city to get dinner. There's no way no girls are looking his way with that haircut. I don't care what his salary is, Joe. That shit was fucking terrible. Totally out of style. And I'm saying that with no hair. And if I had hair, Joe, let me tell you something. If I had hair, I'd be doing some crazy shit with my hair. But nothing like that fucking terrible mohawk, frohawk, whatever you want to call it. if you had hair, it'd be similar to Trey Young. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, listen. If I had a little more hair, I would buy more hair. So it wouldn't look like Trey Young's, okay? Oh my God. <laughs> Listen, Trey Young's Trey Young's hair, I could do we could do a whole nother podcast about Trey Young's hair. I could get at least 30 minutes of content of just Trey Young's hair. And on top of it, he's scared of fucking pigeons. Can we talk about how this dude is scared of birds, but his hair looks like a, a bird's nest? He must have just been attacked nonstop as a kid. Listen, I tweeted this scientifically Trey Young's hair just doesn't make sense to me. Like it, nothing about it just makes sense to me. Scientifically, like, it doesn't like, make sense. Emotionally, it hurts my soul. It's just all like, sorts of bad. Uh, like just there's too much going on and there should be nothing going on. I just need him to get rid of it or call braids by Nelly, Miss Nelly Oda. Wouldn't it be funny? I think Trey Young should just do a comb over. He should just do the like the the fifties, no, the seventy so year old dad you, that's hanging on to the last ten strands of hair he has. He should Joe, just go I'm that gonna way. give you my personal experience with trying to do that. Okay, that was the scariest. <laughs> that there was like <laughs> there was seven to eight months of my life where I was trying to figure out what to do with my hair before cutting it, and I was like, shit. All right, I definitely can't push it back because I'm thinning here, and it just would look retarded if I slick it back and it'd be thinning here. I'll look like a bozo. If I go comb over, right, Joe? Whenever I would comb over, <laughs> I would go to one way and then I'd be missing all in the corner here. So nothing made sense. 
And in Trey Young's case, nothing makes sense, Joe. So you want to oh, keep God. going on this Trey Young's hair topic because we can keep going. But listen, his best bet <laughs> is, you know, he has a ton of money. Go to Turkey or Dominican Republic or wherever he's got to go to find the best. Pay for some Bosley. Play. Just get something going. Listen, he's past Bosley, Joe. Bosley's <laughs> out of the equation at this point. We need somebody to just strip his hair. Yo, it's crazy. He's afraid of pigeons, but he looks like a New York City sewer rat. Hey, you know, Fuck you. Yo, that was listen, so bad. I'm so mad. Let me tell you something. the pod for that. <laughs> if I was Trey Young and I was getting the hate and, and and all this, I can't even imagine what his Instagram DMs look like, his Twitter DMs, his Twitter replies. Dude, if you're I the was... villain and you're eating it up, he's got to be loving this right now. Oh, Joe, can you, Joe, did, how many times did he watch Mayor de, de Blasio's video from today? I got to, wait, wait, wait. I got to ask you a question about that video. If you're Trey Young, and you got the mayor of New York calling you out on your ball. I'm going for 60 at the garden. Next yeah, game. me personally, 60. I'm incentivized, and I'm going to say de Blasio, that was for you after the game, right? De Blasio's a moron for doing that. He just gave him more motivation. I don't know, man. After the first game, Trey Young is feeling on top of the world, and Julius Randle and RJ Bear are the ones that need motivation. We cannot have our two best players go 12 for 38 for 29 points. That is, that's, we're going to lose every game like that. I can't even believe we only lost by two, knowing what their stat line is. Well, I guess that's the only, um, you know, plus we could take from this game is that um, Julius Randle, our best player, played horrible, uh, one or two of his worst games of this season, and we lost by two points. So, I mean, yeah. if we could take anything good out of it, I mean, I guess we could take that our best player had his worst game, and we only lost the game by one possession. You got to give credit to the defense that they made adjustments on Julius for the playoffs, and you got to hope that Thibodeau coming into this one is making adjustments. Dude, I don't even think they the made defense. that many adjustments. Yeah, this I, dude just I, missed I, shots that he makes usually. Just missed shots. He, he got to his shots, spots. Man. He, he was, was open on threes. He was yo, always you know, been double teamed like, the whole year, though. Yo, people don't understand. And as a basketball player, I always explain this. Like, do you understand how hard it is to take 23 shots in a basketball game? Like 23, like to put up 23 shots that you think are going to go in. Joe, imagine you playing in a game. Uh, uh, I don't know. Let's just say you play four quarters right now in a basketball game. You're not putting up 23 shots. Yo, putting up 23 shots is tiring. Dude, no like, shot. Not, not only am I not putting up do. 23 shots, it's like, first of all, a defense is going to be honing in on you after you put the eighth or ninth one, especially if you're Correct. even on fire at all. Like, if you made four of the eight, they're covering you at that point on the rest of the game. Um, but he's been taking 20 shots a game most of the year. Just they didn't go in. That's all that really happened. I think he's going to make the adjustments. I think uh, whatever the adjustment is um, – I, I would personally like to see him be more aggressive. I would love to see him just, you know, I know Capella's a big dude, but uh, I think uh, everything will open up more if he's just more aggressive. Uh, you know, Bullock was 0 for 5 from 3. Yeah, uh, question for both of you guys. It, go ahead. Did you see Bogdanovich being the X Factor for this team? Yes. He's the second or third best player on their team. Anyway, Yo, he made three me, threes in the fourth quarter. We wanted to sign Bogdanovich. Uh, now, here's Thibodeau the thing. Specifically. We're making, adjust- point we're making adjustments on Trey. That's going to leave Bogdanovich. So what are we doing on Bogdanovich? With you you, live, you, you got to live with Bogdanovich to me. I don't think we have to even make that many adjustments on Trey. Like Nikola Jokic got like 34 points the first game and they got like they lost to the Blazers. You can let the best player score and then stop all the secondary options. Like a dude can get 40 points, but if your team only scores 100, you're still losing the game. You know, like I'm not really yes, worried so- about Trey Young. So I was going back and forth with this uh, this guy on Twitter. Uh, I don't know how to say his name, but it's John Schneck. I, it, you know, John Schmeck. I'm sure it you sounds like that, sh- but yeah. It <laughs> sounds like schmuck, but I'm going to say Schmeck. And, um, you know, I told him that I wanted to see the Knicks. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what this means, but I would like to see the hedge man on the pick and roll. You know, when Trey Young, when they're setting up a pick and roll for Trey Young, I would like to see our hedge man show a little harder because to me, it seemed like he was getting so much game in between the paint and the free free throw line. Like that four to six feet, he was killing us. And to me, I thought if Noel or whoever, uh, Randall, whoever was the hedge man, if they hedged harder, we could hope that he takes a few steps back instead of, instead of getting around the edge and getting into the paint. He I countered feel- with that um, he was okay with how the Knicks played uh, the pick and roll defense, but that he thinks that they should just contest. Like we just weren't contesting shots. Yeah, uh, it's weird because Trey Young has the 
the what's it called like the stigma of being a great three-point shooter and he like he's a really good shooter obviously he's one of the best in the world from a normal standpoint but he only shoots 34 percent from three he doesn't get a lot of volume though joe no it is it's not even that high of a volume he only went one for three in this past game they like they i don't think the three-pointer hedging too much would actually because I don't care about making Trey Young go farther back. I'd rather him coax him into taking shots personally. He just actually didn't go for, like, a lot of our guys went under the screens and he didn't actually pull up. He still kept driving into the off. He kept driving into the defense, which was a good adjustment on his part because it's like, I feel like part of what Tibbs wanted to do was coax him into taking threes and he still got the offense involved. He didn't fall for the trick. Yeah, I agree with that. I also noticed that, uh, this last game, we don't really have a help defense when dudes are going to the paint. It's like if they get past you, nobody's willing to throw the body in there. And I really need to see more of that from Taj and Noel going. It's the next game. really, really hard to get anywhere away for either one of those dudes to get it off of Capella. Capella, well, you got to understand that yeah, Trey is driving. Trey has been driving a lot this game, and so have a lot of other guys. Now it's time. For work it's what is your pick your paint. poison type of thing? You know, it's hard. Like Joe said, play, I'd rather know? force a shot than let anybody get anything in the paint. Well, like, listen, I think we did well defending other guys. But I mean, listen, nobody really went crazy on their team. I mean, I'm going to – I thought at one point in the game, I believe it was the third quarter, I, th- I think we were up like eight, and Trey Young got taken out of the game. And I said to myself, all right, we're going to open it up. It was something like eight or six, and Lou Williams came in the game and hit like three straight shots, and I was like, fuck. Yeah, Lou and, Williams went like, off you know, that time. He, he, he didn't like put up, you know, he put up 13 points, but it's not like nobody went off on there. But Donovich had 18 points. John Collin had 12. Gallon Ari did fucking horrible. You know, he wanted to show up to New York and, uh, you know, I don't know what he was trying to do, but it didn't work. Uh, you know, nobody went off. It's just uh, we just couldn't stop one fucking guy. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, do you go on again to like the key plays of the game or just keep free balling it? Ugh. Keep plays of the game, Joe. Here we go. So the first one that I really wanted to talk about was uh, down five, which also this was an awesome play to watch for us. And we ended up tying and taking the lead. There was so much back and forth that like any one of these could be like, it's really whatever or lost in the space of time. But we were down five, six minutes left in the third. And Noel destroys John Collins dunk attempt. Like that was wild. Yeah. And then we get the ball, but Randall dribbles it off his leg out of bounds. And even though, That play was only like two or three minutes prior to the RJ Barrett dunk, which was the loudest the garden has been not only in eight years, but just in general, since COVID started, like that's the loudest any sporting event has been in over a year in the whole world, which is pretty wild to think about was that RJ Barrett dunk, but Randall dribbled it off his leg. And I'm like, yo, I mean, I know you're, I know you like, you know, he's off, you know, he's not having a good game to the point you made before when you said Obi Toppin had 11 or 12 really good minutes. When they took him out of the game in the third quarter, I actually was hoping they would leave him in a couple minutes longer before they put Randall in. Or they would have taken Randall out a little bit sooner because Randall just wasn't having it. And while Obi Toppin's not one of our best five or six players, his energy level was helping out a lot. That's one thing he always gives, Joe. He always gives good energy. And um, usually Tibbs always preaches, you know, whoever's, whoever's, you know, whoever's playing well, just continue to go with it. And um, Toppin was playing Delphi well. Paid. He was uh, – you know, he's out of the equation. Forget about him. Terrible. As a matter of fact, if he grew out his hair, he'd look like a pigeon and maybe he would tr- he would scare Trey Young. <laughs> Grow- growing out his hair is not an option. If Payne had the hair that he used to have on the magic where it was like kind of like Bullocks, but like way crazier, I think I think he would scare Trey into airballing. What is this oh episode 13, God. the hair edition? I Yo, mean, Joe, we're hairless. <laughs> Joe, after after those two two key key uh parts of that game whatever you just said uh the barrett dunk and that uh when and the noel block the noel block i mean to me the biggest the biggest play of the game was um was it the possession before trey shot or even two possessions before that when bogdanovich hit that three? Oh, so um, yeah there was it was 55 seconds left uh there's a pass out to bogdanovich and rj literally cut the pass off it bounces off his shoulder and RJ ends up being out of bounds. And then Bogdanovich literally just grabbed the ball midair wide open, uncontested three. This was this dude's third three pointer made in the fourth. He only scored 18 points. Nine of them were in the fourth quarter off of three pointers and they were all huge. And Joe, that was, the they tied the game on hands. that. The ball was in Barrett's fucking hands, man. How the fuck don't he come away with the ball there, man? 
I don't, I literally, his momentum just was carrying him and dude, like it was like on the shoulder blade, like right here, he tried to grab it and just like his one arm was too far away. His other arm couldn't hit it. It was, it was wild. Joe, Joe, at that point, at that point when RJ Barrett hit the floor and gathered his feet, a nice jab in the ribs. Or an elbow, <laughs> right to Bogdanovich. Let yeah, him, let, I him wish. let him make it at the line, Joe. Yeah, but dude, imagine if he gets fouled on a three and it's a four point play. Like oh, Bogdanovich was on God. fire. Yeah. So that actually, was... speaking of fouls, I wanted to bring up another play because this happened right beforehand. So the Trey Young and one where Gibson literally just goes straight up. Like Gibson has great defense on this, and Young, for what's worth, better had a better finish. So good offense beats good defense in a situation like that. And they called Derek Rose for the smallest ticky tack push in the back. This dude's arm isn't fully extended. It literally looks like he might as well just be putting his hand up to stop his own momentum. And they literally called an A1. I swear the whistle blew before Rose even put his hand up. They were just dying to give this flailing man a call as he like shot, went nine for nine from the free throw line and shot like six or seven of those in the fourth quarter. Joey, How do you not that, call the game correct? How do you not call the game consistently? On that topic though, Joe, I think this is like the first time I was not mad at the refs like that. I think they called the game very what? well overall. I think they called a good game. Then you are in the minority, man. I know you don't follow Twitter or Instagram. Listen, or you're going to get a but... few calls that you fuck up here and there, but all around, I think that they did a decent job. And I'm saying they did a decent job because the Knicks got calls. Like how often do we see that? I mean, dude, at the end of the game, though, it's like when you want to swallow the whistle most, I feel like they like called the BS shit that Trey Young. What, a, tries what to about get the. What about the? It was definitely in the fourth quarter, last two minutes of the game, I believe. There was the drive. The there game. was the drive after that that uh, yes. R.J. Barrett fouled Barrett, him on a Barrett. fast break. That is, uh, I mean, dude, what is, for what it's worth, that was a foul, but that's a foul because Trey Young is an a hole and he literally gets him to chicken wing him. It's like Trey Young didn't have a single i inclination to shoot the ball there or get an open lane at all he was like i am drawing a foul on rj barrett i don't care if i shoot i don't care if i pass i'm not even going to try to get the ball up i'm just drawing a foul on rj barrett and i'm going to get two at the that point. rule has to change though because joe how the fuck is it possible for the defender to stop his momentum going forward you know what i'm saying and this fucking little twerp backs up I don't know. It's 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 not possible. That rule has to be changed by next year. I mean, or else he's gonna. I don't you know, think you know that rule is ever gonna change, dude. It started with the, so Kevin Durant started with the, like the swing in, like you know, like rip you have the ball, the rip through, and you get the foul on that. All the chicken wing is is a, is a dribbling version of that, and there's no way to change that call. A foul's a foul. It just sucks. Get Obi. You're gonna get hit. Obi. You know what? It's like you know. I always hear about like James Harden and. Even Kevin Durant and Trey Young, they seem to like, they know like the line to not cross before it's a foul or not a foul. Like, you know, they just know how to play that perfect game. It's Chris like Paul. almost like an artist. You like, you know, you just know like how to manipulate things. Yeah. Trey Young, dude, that's what it is. Trey Young is a master manipulator. He is. I mean, we hate him. We're going to hate him this whole series and maybe hate him for the next 10 years of his career now, a la Reggie Miller. But um, he is an artist with the ball. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to play refs. He knows how to get to the spots. Do you think after de Blasio's speech about um, quoting Steve Nash saying, you know, that's not basketball, do you think Trey is going to go for less of those or he just does it a ton He's going to go for more. No, dude, yeah. his job is to win the basketball game. Who the fuck cares how he does it? If you draw 30 fouls in the game and you win the game. No, I, I understand game. that. I'm just talking Joe, I'm talking mentality of, you know, the mayor of New York just called me out for that. No one cares. I'm going to make a statement in New York again. What do I don't, you do? um, if I'm Trey Young, I don't, I don't care at all what de Blasio says. It's not, not an issue. I, I, I think, I think if, even if I'm the, if I'm a Nick, I am somehow, some way sending a message to Mayor de Blasio and calling him a moron. Because, you know, you don't want to give this kid any more ammo than he already wants. Like, he's, like, in one game, in his first playoff game of his career, he's become, like, a villain in New York. And who doesn't want to be the next villain in New York? Reggie Miller was that. Uh, Reggie Miller was a fucking villain That makes in New York careers for other years. teams. Yeah, that makes yeah, careers makes- on other teams. He's a legend. Reggie Miller is a and, legend uh, in New York. Bro, uh, anytime Reggie Miller probably walks in New York, he gets heckled. And probably by the time he turns the corner, he's laughing. You yeah. know? Who wouldn't love that? Every time, I'm sure every time, 
Um, I do want to like kind of get onto a positive note before we potentially preview game two. Uh, Alec Burks, man. I mean, Derek Rose went off. Derek Rose played the most minutes he has all season, 37 minutes, uh, 17 points, five assists. He had the game tying bucket after we had already drawn up a poorly, either it was a poorly drawn first play or Randall just was still firing away, hoping to like get rid of the jitters or whatever he had, the cold streak he had. We got the offensive rebound with like 20 seconds left that Taj gets or 15 seconds left. Give the ball to Rose and Rose creates a little bit. Doesn't even get himself that like he gets himself open, but it's not like he got a real a good pick or anything like that. He just found a spot, put up a floater before Trey Young did and tied the game, which was awesome to see. But uh, first of all, two plays like one, that one Randall's shot and missed a three pointer. And then two, the pass in with 0.9 left, like, like, for tips for all of his mojo and everything he's done for our team this year. And this has been his complaint for other stops in the past, which he can be the coach of the Knicks like this for the next three or four years. We weren't expected to make the playoffs. So like no one's going to really chastise him for this, but he's been coaching in the NBA since like the mid nineties. He was a college basketball coach first in like the 1980s. Why is this dude bad at drawing out a bounce play at the end of the game? It's such an important time. Uh, that was a, a terrible play called, and it was just as worse as a terrible pa- – that pass was horrible. I mean, you got point nine on the clock. I believe it's only like point six or point seconds to get up uh, – get up a shot where you're – You need at least point four, point three or less, you can only tip in. Joe, are you sure? Yeah, I swear. I could have sworn it was point six or point seven, whatever it was. By the time he even gathered the ball – Either way, the, the, Rose the, the threw the ball 10 feet in the air. He grabbed the ball all the way like this. By the time he comes down, he landed on the ground. It was at zero. So you got to think they had point nine to work with regardless. You know, with, with the, most of these guys in the playoff for the first time, the, the garden's packed with people for the first time all year. They haven't seen that in have, uh, a year and a half. You know, Here, I'll give you guys a question to follow up on that. Based on the game flow and who was actually doing well, who wasn't doing well, who do you want taking that last shot? Yeah, I was going with Burks all the way, man. I was going I with Burks. Um, you know, he was the hottest player in the game. And uh, uh, I just think Tibbs just, like, he just trusts – you know, Randall hasn't hit many, like, late-game shots like that this year so far, and he's got a ton of opportunities. He hit the um, – the Clippers one was memorable, but most of the other ones, like, either he missed and we got a rebound. They were and, off, Or, Joe. like, they were off. Yeah, he, like, bricks off. it. All right, guys, you got to think this, that that inbound – Play was drawn up with an option and you gotta I, i'm gonna go look at it again after this i would have hoped to imagine that burks had no way of getting the ball but there was a plan for him somewhere in there Dude, to burks get it. was the one passing it in with 0.9 you can was never he? get the ball back he was the one sorry. passing the ball in yeah it's like by doing that you're already taking burks out of the play altogether yeah why not have frank throw that in you're putting him out there for nothing anyway you know dude we should have just had our tallest player throw the ball in taj or noel and then we'd have we'd have randall uh, Randall Burks, uh, quickly Bullock, I would say were our four Bullock or RJ. I mean, either they were both off. So Rose Randall quickly. And then whoever else you wanted out there should have been the one, get one of those guys passing the ball, getting the ball and have Noel or Gibson pass the ball in. Listen, you got to think if we're thinking about this, so is Tibbs. That's probably you keeping him up at night. The past You days. say that, but he's done this over like over the whole year, over the past 25 years, his worst coaching trait is out of bounds place. I mean, yeah, listen, and- I'm not going to be mad at Tom Thibodeau for anything right now. Cannot be not allowed to be. We didn't lose. Uh, I mean, to that point, we didn't lose the game with 0.9 left. We lost the game prior to that. We had a chance. It was a small chance at that point, but you know, I don't even know if, you know, where I, I, I you know what? I wasn't, I wasn't so, so mad about where the pass was thrown or you know i liked the position that randall caught it in meaning like like i liked where he was on the court but number one it was a bad pass uh, he was in his two, he was in his spot on the elbow it was just like 10 he, feet in the air he was right in his spot on the elbow um just didn't work out but i hope going into game three they gotta come game out two. and punch these guys in the mouth game, game two, two yeah they have to punch these guys in the mouth they can't come out scoring 16 points in the first quarter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I mean, dude, for I really think that, like, that first quarter was – it was almost, like, nerve-wracking scary for all the players on the team. Like, they haven't had fans. They hadn't had more than 2,000 people 
in over a year. And then they're hosting the Knicks first playoff game, which I don't care what any other fan of any other NBA team says Madison, Madison square garden is the loudest arena bar none. Like it is the loudest place to play basketball. And they went from having 2000 people there to over 15, like, and Julius Randall, who literally is our King. He is our savior. He brought us team this far. He didn't make the playoffs for the first seven years of his career. And then all of a sudden has all of this pressure on him. He just, he overworked himself. He literally got himself psyched out. And I don't think that's going to happen again in game two. I think he responds really well. Same with RJ. Our team has responded really well to bad losses the whole year. I have a, I, I don't want to jinx it. Knock on wood, but I have a lot of faith that even if we ended up losing the game, our two best players score like double, at least double the amount of points they scored in this game. I forget who tweeted it, Joe, but somebody, I forget, it was one of the Knicks players, but they said they could feel the Madison Square Garden, the floor shaking. Oh, yeah, Obi Toppin. Was it Obi? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys also seen um, Bleacher Reports. Um, they put up a post of what Trey Young said after the game as he was walking through the tunnel. Uh, basically said uh, it's real fucking quiet in there, but, 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 you know, just basically heckling the Knicks fans. Um, and Reggie Bullock was in the comments with the taking notes emoji. Yeah. So somebody's getting a clothesline. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about that. Uh, I wouldn't mind if Gibson or Noel try to take Trey Young out, obviously, or if we were going to start Alfred Payne for two more minutes next game, just have that two minutes be punches them in the face. <laughs> But uh, that would be his biggest contribution to any basketball team in his whole entire career. Literally that he might have ever been on, including AAU. And I'm assuming he was actually one of the best, best ones. The out best. There. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't get it. Um, If we win the next game. Well, first off, we'll do both teams. So if we lose the next game, who on the Hawks makes us lose? And then who on our team you think like messes up something late? I think it's Trey Young and Bogdanovich. I don't, I don't see it changing. Uh, every game we played this year, uh, I don't know if Bogdanovich played in every game we played versus them this year. He only played one. Um, he killed us that game. I remember he hit a, I believe it was a shot in the same exact corner, yeah. uh, a big shot. Uh, you know, and Trey Young. Um, I don't know if he'll go for the same amount of points, but uh, you know, he's just Trey Young. Trey Young. You're not stopping Trey Young. You could just only hope to contain him. Yeah. Um, in terms of what was the part, the Knicks part, Joe? What was the if question? we if we lost the game, who do you think would be at, at fault for us losing game two? Assuming, like, let's put it this way, I don't think it would be Julius Randle again, for example. Yeah. Well, to me, I hate to break it down like this. I may be wording it wrong, but I believe we're a one man show. Like, Randle is the guy. Um, you know, he's the guy that's been our engine. He's just held it down for us this whole year. Um, but I don't think he's gonna have a bad game. It could come down to the last minute again, Joe. Yeah, I think I most think of it comes down to a coaching it. adjustment. I yeah. think we're going to see a problem in Clint Capella. I don't think Clint Capella is having another game like that. I think we're going to see some points. Uh, his rebounds, what do you have? Thirteen rebounds, I think. Which is like the like one of the lower numbers he's had against us all. Yeah, year. I think we're going to see Clint Capella go to work in game two. So uh, to flip it up the other way. Uh, for uh, I didn't even answer the question. If I think if we lose the game uh, on the Hawks part. I would actually think that either Lou Williams had a bigger role uh, or Hunter had a bigger role because DeAndre Hunter had some clutch plays, but he didn't really do too, too much in this game. I still think he's getting his feet wet, but I would think one of the two of them actually went off a little bit outside of the whole young Bogdanovich thing. We can't let, we can't let bogey do that again. I could see if Trey, Whatever Trey is young, we cannot let Bogdanovich do that again in the fourth quarter. I could see if Trey is struggling. Hunter gets some more action. Yeah. He'll pass a lot more. Yeah, they'll let Bagnovich run run the point, let get Trey off the ball a little bit and get Hunter yeah. more involved. I can see that. Um, on the other, so the other side, if the Knicks win and the Hawks lose, um, I feel like it's gonna be beating a dead horse, but it's the dead horse that has our engine, like you guys said, Julius Randle. Like see, Julius I dis- Randle. I disagree, Bo. I think if it's, we win uh, the game, Julius Randle has a significantly better game. I I'm talking it, like triple double like game. I think Derek Rose. I think Derrick Rose, like second unit Derrick Rose, is just going to put up phenomenal numbers. Just be that six man, that candidate he was all year. I actually, Derrick Rose played great. Last he game. did, I but think I think, that, yeah, like you said, if we win, like I'm not saying, I think like he's not, he's going to have a game just like that. 
alongside I really, with RJ and Randall producing. I'm not, I'm honestly, I know we have two days off in between like playing from Sunday to Wednesday is like more time off than they had most of the year. I, I don't want Derek Rose to play 37 minutes again. That is that we're going to kill that dude. He played yeah. so much. Like yeah. we need quickly and Burks to be out there more. Yo, on I that know topic, they were out there a lot, but on that topic, let's say uh, we get past the first round, get through late second round. Do you think the Derek Rose retirement conversation pops up? No shot. No. Not even a little bit. No, they go, him, Thibodeau and Taj are going out all at once. I don't know about that. Gibson's going to retire in the next year or two, but Derek Rose can Gibson's, believe. Gib, Derek Rose is 32 right now and is playing like a different version of himself from 10 years ago. Like, all right, knock on wood, knock on game. wood. Derek Rose gets injured in this in this series. He's retiring. Yeah, right. He's retiring. It, well, it depends on how bad the injury is. Did he sprain his ankle or did he tear his ACL again? There's so many variables. I'm not that. saying either. I hope neither happened. I'm just saying in injuries case. So, uh, and then, so I would say Randall definitely would have the biggest part. And then if the Hawks lost the game, uh, I would probably say that either uh, Bogey had a way worse shooting game. I would say Herder probably actually put up more threes than they want him to, and then they ended up, ended up benching that dude. And we just can't let Trey Young get in the paint like that. That's that. It is what it is. We need Trey Young to do significantly worse. Um, I think we'll we'll. I'm sh- you know I'll put my trust in Thibodeau to make whatever adjustment it has to be. Uh, preferably pick and roll defense. Um, you know, I, I think uh, we'll play it different. I don't know how different. I don't know if they'll list if they read my tweets. Probably not. I don't think it's it, it might not be the hedge. You know, that guy kind of <laughs> turned my eye. I think, you know, we could definitely contest better, uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I think we're going to come out and I think um, I think we're going to punch him in the mouth. Win by 10. I, that would follow suit with the. Uh with the Denver win in the second game, as well as the, what was the other yeah. one that went to one, one that just happened. Uh, Lakers just went one, one and um, Lakers. No Lakers won. Not wait. Lakers are losing one. Nothing. Oh, it was not no, no. The heat and bucks play the second one and the bucks destroyed them. Oh him the my game. God. If, the, if this game can go like the way that uh, the nuggets blazers did the second game, like I, which I could totally see happening. The nuggets won yeah. by 19 points. All the jitters are out. Let's go get them. I hear that. Uh, With that being said, you guys want to finish anything up, put anything in the universe? I'm going to say Knicks win by 10 with Ans. I'm fucking with that. Uh, Um, Final score, I'm going to say we get a 112 to 103 victory. I like that. High scoring, high scoring game. I just, I I think, I think we have to win the next two games. I think we got to take the first one in ATL. One at a time. Yo, what I want to see is Julius Randle hushing the Atlanta crowd. I need to see it. One at a time, like Joe said. Just I want to just see Trey Young shut up here while we're here in the meantime. Uh, with that being said, thank you everyone that listens to us. Make sure to like and subscribe. Share us on YouTube, iTunes, not iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Amazon as well. Uh, once again, check out our sponsor, Empire Original Designs at jointheempire.com. The East Coast number one challenge coin manufacturer, the home of challenge coins, lapels, pins, patches, keychains, bottle openers, and more. Mention our podcast, Big Nick Energy, via email for 5% off purchases. Once again, that's jointheempire.com. Thank you again to Ms. Nelly, very special guest. I love that she's been doing Julius Reynolds' hair on and off for about a year now, and we need to get her back in there, braid the rest of the Knicks' hair, and cut we'll, Trey Young's we'll, hair we'll, off for God's hey, sake. Hey, we'll set up, you know, we'll set up. You know, maybe I'll go to Twitter. We'll set up a, a GoFundMe for all the Knicks fans. We'll just – we'll take care of Julius Randle's braid bills for the next uh, – you know, when he signs this max contract, we'll just put together a whole shit ton of money, and um, that braiding bill will be taken care of by Knicks fans. We maybe, should put together uh, one for that and then one for all – every single fan in MSG to wear a bird outfit. I'm thinking yeah. maybe we even could get enough on this GoFundMe to fly uh, Miss Nelly out here to do the team. Maybe well, get her out could, to Atlanta, whatever it is. Maybe we could have her take care of me and Joe before she does that. You know, whatever she's got to do up top with us. She's a <laughs> hairstylist and braider, man, not a magician. Yeah. What is she going to do? We will give her some shaving cream <laughs> and a razor blade. She'll make something happen. Uh, <laughs> we can only hope. Thank you again to her for being on. Uh, thank you all for listening to us. Check out our sponsors. And I think that's it. We got to win game two, baby. Wednesday night. Let's go, go Knicks. Knicks. Peace. Go Knicks, baby. And welcome to another edition of the Big Nick Energy Podcast. 
I'm your host, Joe Yoke, a.k.a. the Bald Kid Wonder. We got the mastermind, Angelo, who makes it all happen. And our very special guest today, a woman who really exemplifies where one hardworking person's dream can take them. She's a published author, small business owner that might lose the small part very soon with her larger and larger following every day. Growing After this podcast. Especially that. A creative designer genius when it comes to braiding hair. Most importantly, that includes the Knicks' very own Julius Randles. Nellie Span, a.k.a. Miss Nellie. How you doing today, miss? I'm doing good. How are you? We are doing fantastic over here. We both live in the tri-state, like New York, the New Jersey, Connecticut area, and you live in Dallas, Texas. I am so jealous of your weather year-round. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Dallas, Texas don't get no, no winters, huh? There's no snow. I don't know. We had one. We had one this year. That a lot of people were like, "Whoa, what is this?" We Stay over one. there. Don't come to New York, <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Nelly. Uh, first and foremost, just for the sake of the game, this number one question out of the way: How did you and Julius Randall get in contact with each other? How did you start being his hair braider? Last year, he started growing out his hair, and he sent me a DM on Instagram and said, "Hey, hopefully you have some time, but I want to get some braids." It was just random. And uh, I was like, well, heck yeah, and I knew exactly who he was. And so I, he was here in Dallas. So I went and braided his hair. We established, you know, good rapport, good relationship. And I continued to braid his hair up through until about February. So was, was there some, like, mutual connection, though? Like, was there any mutual friends in terms of Instagram? Or did Julius find out about you through another NBA player or something like that? No, I think he said. Uh, I, no, I think he said that someone was supposed to braid his hair. I think they might have stood him up. Um, and so then his wife went. You know, Kendra went and looked and said, "Let's find a braider who's good in Dallas." And she found me and said, "She looks like she does really good." And he sent me a DM, and then it went from there. When he Do first you, uh, when he first messaged you, how many followers did you have on Instagram at the time? Do you remember? Um. I don't remember. I was either just over or just under 100,000. I, I was somewhere in that, in that range. Let me, um, what, like, do you know how important you are to this team's success? Do you feel, <laughs> does anybody directly <laughs> message you? And do you kind of just feel that New York energy? Do you feel like almost like you're a part of this team, sort of? Oh, I, I did, uh, especially like at the beginning of the season, uh, you know, he was just sharing, reposting his stories. That was braiding his hair. And, um, you know, the first couple months of the season, they were like, you know, I think it's the braids. You know, the Knicks are like on fire, and I think it's the braids. They have something to do with it. So, um, and then, of course, recently I've just got a lot of fans in, in my DMs like, thank you, you know, for the braids. Oh, my God. I can't even imagine. <laughs> You're probably getting flooded by all New York people. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I want Miss Nelly. I want to follow up with that. Outside of Julius Randall, what other uh, celebrities and athletes have you braided the hair of over the years? Um, so actually, my first like major, I guess, official celebrity client was Mike Jones, the rapper based out of Houston. Ooh. Um, oh yeah. My so God. once I got Mike Jones, and I do his hair all the time now. Um, let's see, uh, Jonathan Davis. He plays for um, for the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, rapper DDG. Um, Let's see, there's a couple of other NFL players. I'm a key to leave. Actually, I was at his house today. Um, I braided his wife and his daughter's hair every month. So Yeah, because um, I, I'm pretty sure a keep to leave doesn't have hair, if I'm not mistaken, right? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Listen, I, just, I saw him earlier today. I was there doing his, doing his wife's well, hair earlier. Nice. With all the with all the success we have with Julius, you know, with it hair braided, I mean, you got to personally direct message these other Nick players because uh, they'll go for the same amount of points, rebounds, and assists if they get their hair braided. Quick, no, none <laughs> of the players hit you up quickly. Anybody like that? Nobody. No, um, I was kind of hoping. I was wondering at one point if uh, if R.J. Barrett was going to grow his hair out long enough, you know, for me to do something to it, but. Um, Oh, the past couple of months, you know, Julius has had um, a, a backup braider there. Just the time difference and how long it takes for me to get to him. Yeah. So, so, so you said you um you did it up until like the All Star game. Were you traveling with him? Well, he would fly me from Dallas to New York. He would bring you from Dallas to New York. Okay, that's so awesome. So, so, so that's that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Ms. Nelly, I wanted to ask after that. Um, so one person that we all think that uh would definitely need his hair braided, even though we personally don't care on the Knicks side. 
girl, <laughs> someone's got to fix Trey Young. What is going on up there? You know, I thought about it, you know, like reaching out to him to see, but I don't know. I don't, I've never really seen him like with the Braves, you know, like a, a Braves person. So I'm like, maybe that's just not his thing. We don't want him to get those superpowers. <laughs> we don't want him to get those super. He's already given up enough enough hell over here in New York. Just keep him whatever hair he's got left. He's better off looking like me and Joey, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I would do anything for Trey Young what's, just not what, shove what, my TV screen. <laughs> what's like you know, considering you do hair, what is like one of the craziest like hair requests you've ever had? Oh boy. Um. I mean, I've I'm had sure there's got to be some good ones. That's taken like 24 hours straight to do. Um, I've had to do braids that are like down to the floor. Yeah. 24 I've, I've hours? Yeah. How many breaks do you take in between? How does that process go? Um, I use for a job like that. I usually have three breaks and three one hour breaks. Because once I get into my mode, I'm just like, let's flow, let's go. I've got an assistant. Let's let's get it going. But you know, we gotta we gotta eat so we get the fuel in our bodies to keep going. Tell me yeah. about it. Since me and Angel will obviously never have to go through that, fortunate or unfortunate enough. I could does... buy hair, Joe. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Relax. Right. I'm not, I don't know about you, man. I'm not getting Bosley. But uh, just out of curiosity, what does it cost to do a 24-hour job? What is that price range? Oh, it's thousands. Um, I mean, it's three, four thousand dollars and really depending on the complexity of the work, you know, that we're doing. Um, somebody gets a style like that, usually they're flying me out of town. They have to pay, of course, for my travel or my sister's travel and stuff, too, so. They, they gotta they gotta drop some money. Do, do, something do, like that. do you understand <laughs> if you ever just came to New York full time, especially right now with New York Knicks success? Do you know if you just walked into the into any bar or restaurant presenting yourself, you're getting free everything. <laughs> we need you to I need you to just come to New York with a t-shirt that says I braid Julius Randall's hair <laughs> and the world will be given to you. As much as Julius hey, Randall runs that. New York. You will run New York just as much. <laughs> I might do that. I just might. <laughs> Ms. Nelly, you just cannot do any Nets hairs. There's no Nets Nets players you can do. <laughs> no Nets players. I, I'll be, I, haven't, I haven't considered, you know, I'm trying to reach out to the Nets to, to get any of them. But hopefully I'll be uh, great to leave some hair again here pretty soon. So I'm going to reach out to them. Hopefully in the finals when we play the Mavericks. That would be ideal. Yeah, that would be, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Oh who was the God. most famous person's hair you ever who, who you ever worked with who you ever did or braided? Um, I, I think it's Julius. Julius is my it's my Julius. biggest. Yeah, my biggest lab. I mean, once I got him, I started to really get a lot of attention. So that's um, awesome. So was yeah. he like, was he like, you know, I feel like we all have these kind of moments where we see like a, a person, I mean, I hate to say idolize, but me, you know, I idolize people and humans and stuff like that. But like, did you ever get like, was he kind of like when you met up with him, were you kind of like starstruck or was there any other person's hair you did that you were just like, holy shit, like I'm really braiding this person's fucking hair right now. Excuse my language. That's just the way I talk. No, it's good. <laughs> um, I, I felt like that at first with Mike Jones because I had never had yeah. you know, flying in the chair. Once I started doing this hair more frequently and started doing some stuff, now yeah. it's just like, you know, with celebrities are people just yeah. like. Yeah, you, you know what? You know, I was just talking about this with my friend. It's like, we, when I was younger, I like looked at celebrity and I was like, holy shit, like I can never like, if I ever happen to be in the same place as these people, I can never hang with them. But the more as I get older, I'm just like, yeah, these people are just the same as me, just happen to be really good and worked really hard at something else. And like, I can hang. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Nelly, if you did have any spare time, which based on your calendar, you look like you get booked out months in advance within a day, if that honestly at this point. Oh, yeah. But if you were <laughs> able to sneak out to Atlanta, for when the Knicks go on the road there and just manage to do a couple of the Knicks players' hairs, you probably could move out to New York and open up a place and never have to fly again once in your whole life. <laughs> you mean like, would I do it? Right, would you do it? Yeah, if you could. Yeah. Oh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> what about just for the playoffs? <laughs> for the playoffs, yeah. Yes. So, so how come yeah. like in, in somebody in your type of field, you kind of just, when you work with somebody, you worked by yourself? For the most part, yes. Um, sometimes I'll take an assistant depending on if, if I'm really restricted on time or if the job is like the 24-hour job. I, I'm not doing that by myself. So what's I've like, had. like in people in your field, like what holds you, like what holds you back from opening up like your own shop or is it just not worth it? In this day and age, 
I feel like you can get further with creating a brand and an identity if you you're just, if you're on your own. Um, opening up a big shop that's that's a lot of management, babysitting and managing other people. You're secluded and, as well. Yeah, and, and so it's like I really I like to spend more time, you know, putting myself out there, getting these opportunities. I like the if Julius texts me right now, hey, can you get out here, you know, tomorrow or whatever, I like the freedom to be able to say, yeah, let's go, you know, which flight do you want me on? As opposed to let me make sure, I, you know, I got stuff taken care of at the shop first, that kind of thing, so. Ms. Nelly, you are awesome. We cannot thank you enough. Just uh, real quick, two things. One, how long have you been braiding hair for now? And then two, where can our listeners find you on Instagram and online and stuff? Sure. So um, I've been braiding hair for a little over 22 years now. Um, girl you don't look that old good for you i know i know (laughs) um i uh yeah about 22 years and then you can find me on instagram at braid underscore by underscore miss nelly m-s-n-e-l-l-y braid underscore by underscore miss nelly and then you have a website as well right is it braid by miss nelly.com yep awesome miss nelly before i let you go i'm just going to give you a couple praises from me oh. and all yes. of the Knicks he's, fans. He's bowing down. <laughs> I can't really bend too much. I, I just, I, I just kind of hurt my back, but that was me bowing down to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you for everything you do and did for Julius. You are legitimately yeah. a New York hero, even if you don't come here anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Miss Nelly. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, no problem.